Hi everyone. Uh, well, uh, let's move on to the uh, lecture notes 17. Well, on the very top, and I gave you uh, the description and the expectation about the deliverables, the presentations, the written, uh, the written uh, technical report about the final, uh, the final course project. Okay, so you have already seen that, and I have already made a video talking about this part in the day 16 video. Okay, so let's move on. And today we want to uh, we want to move to another topic. We want to talk about the code quality. Well, and I believe you have done a lot of coding already. And if there is a project and that project requires you to write 100, 200 lines of code, and you won't feel so so scared about that, right? Well, the next question I want to ask is, how good is your code? Is your good is the code good enough that you you feel that it's comfort you it, you are comfortable with sharing that online you you are ready to build a github personal repository for a show as a showcase of your coding ability are you ready for that well and probably you feel uh no well my code is kind of messy yes well, if you you feel that your code is messy, and the next question is how you can clean that up, right? Well, and then you have to define what is a good code and why some of the code is not good. Okay, so today we are going to try to address part of this issue. This issue. Well, for the code quality, well, uh, well, for the beginner programmers, and they may say, okay, my code works, so yeah, my code, my work is done. No. Not, not like that, because having a working, working version of the code is only the first step. And then you have to figure out a way to make your code even better. Well, better to your standard and also better to other people's standard. Well, and then in the industry, you will feel this way. So every, everyone else coding, coding self sucks except mine. Well, uh, you may find uh, if you want to if you have to read other people's code and you find oh that code is really sloppy I, I hope that I can rewrite some of the code for him or for her but uh, probably I don't have the time but uh, well reading other people's code can be really painful and well you may feel this way especially if you're in a big project well and the, well and the next topic is how do we define what is the standard of the coding? Well, no worries. And there are multiple standards. And if you uh, if you start working in industry, and the first thing you want to ask is, what is the coding standard are we following? And for example, even for the very basic thing, well, when you are creating a function, do you use camel cases or the snake cases? Well, uh, do you remember what is that? Say, if you want to define my fancy function, Okay, so if you're doing the function name this way, and then that is a snake case, or uh, in some other program language, and they may do this way, my, fun uh, my fancy function, and then this is the camel case, because other than the first letter, and then they want to capitalize all the other, all the rest of the letters. So, well, this is called a camel case. Well, and in the Python community, it's unfortunately that we see both, and even among the professors, and then we we have different preferred style. But when you start working industry, you may want to ask your boss or your technical guru in your team, what is the coding standard are we following? Do we have an internal coding standard, or uh, we are following a uh, more popular coding style guideline. And well, one of the most popular one will be, hmm, let me reload, what's going on? Okay, and one of the most popular one will be uh, this. Uh, this is called PEP, and this is a common uh, coding style development developed for the Python community. Okay, and the next thing is kind of small, but a lot of time people don't bother to do that that is the uh, that is the common well you want to comment the uh, comment your code to a certain level that by looking at your comments even without looking anything into your code the reader can sort of figure out uh, what has uh, what this code is supposed to do 
Okay, erase all the code and only leave the comments. And then, well, if the reader can still have some feeling, at least some understanding on what you have been doing, and then this code is good. And for uh, for industry, some people advocate that well, the more than fifty percent of the volume of the code should be the comments. Well, that's a lot, right? This means for each line of the code, and then at least you have to write another line of the comments with the same length. Well, that's a lot. And in, in this course, if you don't want to do that, but well, uh, say especially for the final project, you may want to add some comments because later I'm going to read your code and I'm going to go through that and run your code and uh, before I gave you the scores. So, well, adding some comments will really help me. Okay, and the next thing, well, the dry, the dry rule. Well, and you may say, what is the dry rule? And how can we make our product or our code wet? Okay, for the dry, it means don't repeat yourself. Well, uh, especially, well, for the, uh, for in the world of data science, we tend to do that. And let's be honest, well, and especially when you are in the Jupyter Notebook, well, you, uh, Jupyter Notebook is kind of an environment encourage you to do more copy and paste than really necessary. Why? Because say if I grab a, a one box of the code and then I know it works and then I just start a new box underneath and then I want to do something similar. So I copy a code from uh, from a box above and then I move it down and then I, I do some tweaking and then ta-da, it works. So again, copy and paste is the easiest way for us to get the work done. But the problem is when we are doing this and we make the code harder to maintain and say if you have done a similar test in one Jupyter notebook and well you did that by doing copy and paste and eventually well uh, the, the volume of the code will be really really long. That's one thing and another thing is when you want to do some changes and then you have to do the changes on all the occurrence of the copy and paste code and this can be really really painful and well so how do we avoid doing a lot of the copy and paste well we have the answer already well we can use the functions right well we usually have to re use, the, use the functions to reduce the the cases of the copy and paste. When you have to do a copy and paste, and then the first thing you want to consider is how can you make it a function call? And then if you are doing that for different small things, they are kind of similar, but not exactly the same. And then you, the, the question you want to ask is how can I make the function flexible enough? So I define one function with one or several parameters and then I can make use of the function calls with different parameters to get different similar tasks done with only one function. Okay, so let's see this example. So for this example, uh, well, we are trying to we are, we are defining a function that takes two strings and then we are, we are trying to decide whether those two strings, they follow the same Python or not. So what do I mean the same Python? Well, say for this one, uh, I'm trying to check uh, the OFF and the TEE, those two words, do they follow the same Python? Uh, well, how do we tell that? Well, let's say, let's do this way. Say if we have the off. And then we want to do a this conversion. The conversion is for the first letter, the first new letter we have seen in this string. I change the new letter, the, that letter to one. So in this case, well, the first letter, first new letter I have seen from the string of should be the letter O, right? So I'm changing the O to a one. So now OFF will be one FF. Okay. And then if we want to do this process again for the second new letter I have seen, and then I'm changing the second new letter to the number two. So now the second letter, I, the second new letter I have seen will be F. So it will be the one, two, two. Okay. So this will be the Python of the, of the string of after we have done the conversion, converting a string to a 
a, a sequence of numbers. OK, and then if you want to do the same thing, if you want to do the TEE, -E, OK, the process will be the same. For the first let, first new letter I have seen, I'm changing that to 1. So TEE -E becomes 1 EE. -E. And after that, for the second letter I have seen, and then I'm changing that, changing all the occurrence of the second letter to 2. So I got 1. To two. So what's your ob observation? Your observation should be now I really have uh, the of and t those two words to follow the same Python. And what is the Python? The Python is one, two, two. Okay, so this is this is my idea, and well, I can do that in uh, in different uh, in different implementations. And eventually, I decided that I want to do a a dictionary again so well you know dictionary is my favorite data type okay so how do i do that so let me take the off as an example i'm going to build this kind of a mapping table and that is well for the first letter f uh, for the first letter o i want to map that to one right so for each occurrence of the o i want to map the o's to the ones so this is the first key value pair and we map the o to one and what's the second one the second one is for the f we want to map that to a two so again well we only have to do the uh the f maps to two once and then for this masking or this conversion it will be applied to all the cases that we can find the letter f it could be one of them or it could be multiple of them okay so for this off eventually i want to create this dictionary and after i have this dictionary i can use this dictionary to do the conversion so eventually i will get the one to two okay so this is my idea and then let's take a look at my code so on my code, I know I'm going to take two strings, so S and T. Well, if S is empty or T is empty, I'm going to return a false. And otherwise, I'm also going to check the length. So if the length of the S and the length of the T, they're not the same, and then I'm going to return the false. Because if the lengths are different, there's no way they can follow the same Python, right? And then I want to create a dictionary, a dictionary for S. So for the highlighted part of the code, I'm touching the string S. OK, and I'm creating a dictionary and then I also want to start a counter from the one and I want to convert the string S to a list of the numbers. So eventually I'm going to get a list of the one to two. OK, and then I'm building the dictionary and on the uh, on the fly, I'm also doing the conversion. So eventually I will get the one to two. So I'm touching the string S in the highlighted part. And you see the you see the next part. So for the next part, I'm doing exactly the same thing. However, I'm touching the second string, which is T, instead of the first string S. Okay. So now this is the problem. The problem is, I'm touching the string S. I'm also touching the string T. But I did that by copy and paste the code. Okay. So this is kind of a violation of the dry principle for the dry for the dry principle we don't want to repeat ourselves right so how do we fix that okay and then let's try to fix that in one way that is well how about we do an iteration so for this iteration i'm putting together the s and t into a list okay i'm, I'm doing an iteration it will run for two runs. The first run, I'm visiting S. The second run, I'm visiting T. OK, but since I put that into a iteration, so for the highlighted version of the code, I'm only going to write that once. And then I'm using the iteration to make sure the code will run for twice for me. OK, so go ahead and try to uh, finish the iteration, uh, finish this version of the code to 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 dry the code okay i'm going to show you my answers in the next video